Doug Hagman, Joe Hagman here for Hear the Watchman from Dallas, Texas. It's March 19th, 2016. We're in the middle of the Hear the Watchman conference. This is a behind the scenes look with the speakers and one of my favorite people is certainly one of the most knowledgeable people about uh, scriptures, the, the, just a wonderful scriptorian, a prolific author, and of course uh, a, a just a tremendously sought after guest on our show. Pastor David Langford. Pastor Langford, thanks for joining us behind the scenes. Joe Hagman's here. We're together. Uh, so, Pastor's website, voiceofevangelism.com. Thank you for bailing me out on that one, voiceofevangelism.com. Pastor, what's, uh, uh, so, what do you think? What do you think of the, the conference? So I think the conference is astounding. I think the people of God are being edified. People are being touched by his presence, being lifted up. And I think these things are important, especially in the times in which we're living in. People need to be encouraged. They need to be refreshed. Uh, the psalmist in Psalms 85, verse 6 said, Will thou not revive us again, O Lord, that thy people may rejoice in thee? You know, too often we lose our joy in the Christian pilgrimage, and we need to be revived again and get that joy back because the world has a way of usurping and taking that joy out of our lives. Indeed. No. Uh, and, and, folks, I just want to say this. In case you haven't had the opportunity to do... Uh, to be here, here at Hear the Watchman. Um, it, 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 Pastor Langford has, has really has, has really given a lot of spiritual comfort and inspiration in addition to the information, but the this, this spiritual inspiration, and this is why we do conferences, I believe, is to be able to rub elbows with people like yourself, you know, with uh, like-minded Christians. And, and so many people I've talked to during this conference have come up to me and said, you know, I've, I've spoken to Pastor Langford and uh, I've really been uh, blessed by, by his by what he's had to say to me, prayer, praying over me and such. So, I mean, it's important to be among like, like-minded like Christians, isn't it, to, to be a part of this? Well, absolutely. You know, the Bible teaches us that we are a body. And when one member suffers, all of us suffer. Uh, regretfully, the church has taken on the nature of the world, self-centered, self-serving. But we must always remember uh, people in the church, the body of Christ, are going through times of difficulty. Uh, David said in Psalms 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And so as a body, it's our responsibility to bring encouragement and strength. Uh, one of the things that's very powerful to me was when Jesus was warning Peter prior to his failure in Luke 22, 31. He said, Simon Peter, Satan hath desired to have you, that he might sift you as sweet. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, he said, strengthen the brethren. In other words, he said, Peter, Satan has personally come to me. He's exceedingly demanded that I give him your soul. But I have prayed for thee that your faith will not fail. We know that his faith fell to some degree because he cursed and he swore that he did not know Christ. But he said, after you are converted, strengthen the brethren, which tells me as brethren, we have the ability to strengthen one another. You know, when Joe's down, you're up. So right. you give him an encouraging word. When you're down, Joe's up, and it works vice versa. You're both down, I come along and try to encourage you both. <laughs> so this is what it's all about, strengthening the brethren. Right. And these conferences and these meetings are for that express purpose. And, um, you know, as, as, a, as a spiritual leader, a pastor, I feel an obligation to fast, to pray, and then to bring the Word of God. Everyone has a different facet, a different role in ministry. And mine is simply to preach the Word. You know, I don't have the gifts and the talent and the knowledge that many of these other speakers have, but that's not my role. Just like you guys have the program, the platform that God has afforded you. That's your role. That's your position. That's your posture. That's why we work together. You know, we're working together and contending for the faith together to minister to the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and this is why, folks, I, me personally, I call Pastor Langford, I mean, not just my pastor, the pastor of the Hagman Hagman Report, but America's pastor. I mean, and, and maybe that's, and I, I don't want to, I mean, I just, I just, I, I think you, uh, to, to, to me, Pastor Langford, uh, I really believe that you really are America's pastor. I think when people look at, when people are looking for, searching for Christian, the basic Christian principles, you you exemplify them all in terms of. I've heard, I've heard two uh, Thanks, different um, 
people, uh, two different types of people come up and, and they say either one or two things uh, that everybody, they're surprised how nice everybody is between the guests and, and the other um, uh, people attending. And then two, that, that you're a walking Bible. And they're That's amazed at how many scriptures you just know off the top of your head. And uh, it's just it's just amazing to see everybody, uh, you know, recognizing that and recognizing and, and uh, exceeding expectations is what we were talking with Greg Jackson about. And uh, this conference definitely has exceeded expectations for for us. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's great to meet the people and to see that they're uh, getting to know the speakers and people on our show and, and just getting that fellowship is very important. Well, that's important. You know, uh, fellowship is just that. We encourage, we strengthen, we bear the burdens. Galatians six and two, Paul said, "So full for the law of Christ, and bear ye one another's burdens." Mm -hmm. You know, so if you know you're burdened. It's our role, responsibility, to come and help bear that burden, you know, and that's what I want to do. You know, that's why I come with the, the Word of God. That's my role, is to preach an uncompromising message and tell it just like it is according to the Word of God. You know, no cotton candy, no fluffing stuff, but just <laughs> tell the truth because the Word is Jesus. And if you're preaching the Word in any way, shape, form, or fashion, you're preaching Jesus. And, you know, people say, preach more Jesus. Well, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so, you know, he, he is the Word. And so when you're preaching the Word, you're preaching Jesus, the Lord's Christ. And that's what lifts people up, you know, the Word. You know, Paul in Romans 1 and 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel at all because it's what redeemed me, redeemed you guys, and uh, that's why we preach it and we teach it. Amen. Amen. And you're bringing more than the gospel to this conference. Um, the baptisms that yeah. will be done at this conference. Uh, we're yet to get to that portion uh, that will be tomorrow, but uh, do we have a rough estimate? Of how many uh, there's well over 200 to be water baptized, so uh, I need a, a, a diver suit, <laughs> an oxygen tank. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the, the, the brethren are going to help me, uh, and I'm very grateful for the other brethren to help assist me and aid me in this much baptism. And I think we're supposed to dedicate eight babies tomorrow, too. Oh. So and we'll be serving communion tomorrow, and so it'll be a really, a really great, a great day, I hope. And uh, if the Lord will just show up and help me to help everyone, I'll be exceedingly happy on my part. Amen. And, and you know, I had this mental image, and, and this is something that uh, I have this mental image from Dallas, Texas, of a candle, a single candle. And you know how they do this at marriage ceremonies where the husband and wife will take and light. That's right. But I, I've got this vision of everyone having, everyone here having their own little candle and leaving here with that light, the information, inspiration, and uh, the, the light in word, uh, the light in, 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 well, the word, you know. Amen. That's, that's, that's who Jesus was in John 8, 12. I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And they're going to take that candle, which is him, the light of life, and carry it wherever they go. Satan wants to put that light out. Of course. But we can't afford to let that light go out. And we, it's up to us to keep the light burning. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, that was the, one of the priestly duties, uh, the golden, uh, seven golden candlesticks. Uh, they would snuff out five of the candles and replenish the oil and put new wicks in. And then they would take those two that were left and relight the other five. And then they would pull out the old wicks, put fresh oil, and put new wicks in there. And then light all, all seven would be relit again. Because right. the, the candle was to burn constantly. It was to never go out. If it went out, it was a sin. It was to never go out. And so, in theory, it's a sin for us to allow the light of Christ to go out in our lives because he is a perpetual light and uh, he said you are the light of the world and so it, it's never supposed to, it can't lose the power because he is eternal power but we allow soot and stuff to get into our life that dims that light and that soot is a type of sin but you keep your globe clean and that candle really gives all of its light out and others can see it and it guides people as well you know, David said in Psalms 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So that's why the word is, is such a light to the people. 
Amen. What a uh, wonderful mental image that creates, you know, and it's, it's fabulous. Well, Pastor, we know you're busy. Of course, we have, uh, and, and folks, you know, here at these conferences, we do have people, prayer rooms, and of course, tomorrow, baptism. We know you're busy, uh, Pastor, but uh, we just want to say thank you so much for your participation. And, and boy, the, the, the takeaway in, in 60 seconds, uh, what would you urge people who are attending here, or the, even to those people who haven't? What's the takeaway from, from this weekend? You know, Doug, the thing is, as long as Jesus Christ is alive, we all have hope. Yeah. I never lose hope no matter how bleak the United States become, no matter how debased our government and politics become. As long as God is on his throne, brother, there is hope for all of us. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. So no matter how disparaging and th things may look, in my heart I still have hope in God. It's like David, my trust is in the Lord. You know, and, and, and if you trust him, he's, he's going to save you. He's going to make things happen for you. So you know, I want everyone to leave just elated and, and full of joy and, and, and the presence of God, taking that presence with us. You know, that's why the Ark of the Covenant was a type of the literal presence of God. And they took it with them everywhere, symbolizing, I'm with you. And of course, let me close with this passage in Hebrews 13, 5. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And that's what he is. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. So I have perpetual hope every day. Amen. You know? Well, I tell you what, I, th I think that nothing more needs to be said with that. Hear the watchman, Pastor David Langford, voiceofevangelism.com. By the way, several books, including uh, Revelation 13 Revealed. Oh, fantastic book. Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you both. God bless you. God bless Amen. you. Okay.